Thank you for joining me today as we discuss the topic of organizational design. In this session, we will be looking at organizational design and structures, formal and informal cultures, structure, systems, and technology, level five leadership, climate, entrepreneurialism, and individual initiative. When you hear organizational design, what words or thoughts come to mind? Do you find the concept of organizational design to be ambiguous, overwhelming, and possibly even scary? In a nutshell, organizational design can generally be defined as the science and art of creating an organizational structure optimized to support strategic, business, or cultural goals. It examines strategies, culture, structure, processes, and even more to achieve those goals. There are a number of different organizational design types, including functional, geographic, divisional, program or product, market, network, and matrix. Other types may also emerge based on who you're talking to, but they'll generally fall into one of these or a hybrid model that integrates aspects of more than one type. When considering organizational design, the question often emerges, what is the ideal organizational design? There are a number of factors to consider when developing the most effective organizational design for your company. 35 years ago, organizations were thought to be self-contained and structured to find the reporting relationships among internal functional departments. Companies are much more complex these days, so this elementary mindset doesn't seem to fit all of our needs today. As we look at organizational design in today's marketplace, it is important to ensure there is also a focus on the leadership, culture, and climate that will support the design that is clearly in line with overall mission, vision, and values of an organization. When looking at organizations, there are always two cultures that coexist, the formal culture and the informal culture. Often formal cultures will be set on on paper in the form of organizational charts. However, in the course of time, an informal structure develops in most organizations, which is based on the reality of day-to-day -day interactions between members of the organization. This informal structure may be different from that which is set out on paper. It is often said that the informal structure is where the work actually gets done, problems are solved, and companies gain competitive advantage. Each individual employee can have an impact on the organizational culture, both formally and informally. We must foster culture from the top down and push it through to all levels. Once the formal culture has been defined in how an organization wants to be known, we must continue to foster this in everything we do from the highest level and push it to our leaders, who then push it to our managers, who push it to our team members. We can accomplish this with a clear overarching vision and training our leaders and continuous communication from level to level. Fostering innovation and imagination throughout the organization will also reap great results. By focusing on both our formal and informal cultures, we will see an increase in overall productivity, engagement, and success as an organization. As we consider organizational design along with formal and informal cultures, we also must be cognizant of how structure, systems, and technology will support that design. One component to help us integrate these is a project plan. A proper project plan will focus on people, processes, and product. Businesses can talk a good game, but the majority are not ready or willing to make the true investments needed to achieve meaningful change. For a successful project plan, we can use Ponce's eight steps to on-time, on-budget delivery. Those steps include definition, evaluation, resources, goals and objectives, control, monitor, measure, and improve. By following this simple project plan, we will see an enormous positive impact on our business as a whole and ensure everything we do provides value. When dealing with organizational design, leadership is of utmost importance. One way to address this is with the level five leadership model. There are a number of chief characteristics of level five leaders. They hold a high level of determination and refuse to give up. They set the next generation up for success. They are willing to make the tough decisions. They are humble. They take responsibility for their actions and the actions of their team. And at the end of the day, they understand it's not all about them, it's about the company. When reviewing the hierarchy of level five leadership, there are a number of similarities with the theory of transformational leadership. By focusing on the components of the level five leader in a more rounded vision with transformational leadership, we will effectively set our managers up for success as they move into a newer arena of leadership. 
Culture can be understood as the overarching philosophy of an organization and how they go about conducting business and working together. An entrepreneurial culture will often manifest itself with a frontier spirit, but does not necessarily mean startup. Cultivating a culture that values diversity, individual initiative, openness, and idea generation will positively impact the way we do business and work together to drive growth. Organizational climate can be seen in the environment of an organization and feeds into the overall culture. Organizational climate has a potentially rich but largely unrealized role in the development of an organization, as well as to raise the motivation of employees. As with culture, climate plays a crucial role in the morale and motivation of employees. As we reward our top performers and cultivate a climate that values individual initiative, we will see greater productivity and engagement within our teams. Thank you for your time today, and I look forward to watching as we continue building our organization.